Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to this week's edition of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys checking out today's video. And today's seminar, guys, we're gonna be talking all about topwater lures. I've got all my topwater plugs out here as far as divided up into different categories of topwaters. And I'm gonna go through each one of them in today's video and I'm gonna sort of explain to you what they do and uh, the situations they work best in. We're gonna go over uh, the equipment to throw them on and then we're gonna wind up the second half of the seminar. We're gonna be talking about conditions and areas and the, the, the ideal locations to fish these in. So it's gonna be a, a very, very comprehensive topwater seminar here. And also down the line, um, I'm gonna take each one of these categories and do a really, really in-depth uh, seminar, 45 minute hour seminar on each one of these lures because there are uh, technique specific times they really work good. But today, guys, we're gonna give you guys a really good overview of, uh, of topwater fishing, you know, with the different types out there. Um, real quick, guys, before we get started, uh, just, uh, you know, there's got a lot of info here on the advanced bass fishing. And if, if you guys uh, like the content here and you really uh, wanna support the channel and keep it going, one of the best ways you can do is just use, uh, check out all the links that I put in the description. Uh, those links are stuff like our Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdowns and Virtual Lessons, my Solar Bat Signature Series Sunglasses, uh, affiliate links I work with, uh, information on booking a, a, a on-the-water lesson with me. Um, so if you guys could uh, check those uh, uh, video or those, those uh, links out, it would be much appreciated uh, moving forward here. Thanks a lot. Okay, guys, let's dive right into this. We're going to get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the basic categories of topwater lures that I have. And each one of these categories, I'm going to sort of give you a, sort of a brief summary of when uh, they're really highly effective and sort of the, the characteristic of what, what they are. And um, maybe talk a little bit about the personality of the fish that, uh, you know, react to these uh, type of topwater lures a little bit better. Okay, so first of all, let's get into one of the everybody's favorite, and that's a walking topwater. Um, also, guys, all the uh, baits I have here, they're available at Baitworks. I'll put the link in the description if you guys want to use that. Um, the walking topwater is uh, one of the oldest out there. The old Zerispook, this is the Mega Bass Diamante, a more modern version of it. But the walking topwater has been one of the most highly effective topwaters for, man, probably since the 1950s. I think the I think the original Zerispook came out sometime in the early 50s or something like that. And it's one of those lures that has stood the test of time. And, uh, you know, the, the walking action that this bait has side to side, it appeals to the fish. There's something about it that will pull fish up. They really like it. They really attack it. Um, it's one of the most consistent producers of topwaters that they are. But there are a cer certain set of situations where these work, work a lot better. And we're going to get into the conditions more towards the end of the video. But just to preface the stay, I'll give you guys a brief summary of each one of them. The walking topwater, guys, is generally better in a little bit cleaner water conditions. So ideally, I like to have really at least three foot of visibility to throw a walking topwater. And it can work all the way up, you know, through, you know, different, uh, the cleanest water that you can possibly have. Also, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll go over colors on these things here just a little bit. We'll talk about the best colors for topwaters. But the walking topwater, to me, I consider it some type of a, uh, you know, a cleaner water topwater. It works in a wide range of wind conditions. Um, it'll work in slick, calm conditions, and it'll also work in windy conditions. <coughs> I remember there was, a, there was one angler uh, that fished here in the Ozarks years ago when I fished the BFL. His name was Clayton Douglas, and he was a spook expert, a walking bait expert. He, he basically only fished two lures. He fished a jerk bait and a spook, and he would be catching them on a spook with nobody else. And I, I remember one time talking to Clayton about the, the spook and a walking topwater. He said that he, it was one of his favorite lures. Like when the waves were like two and three feet tall, he said these, this thing would be like surfing over the waves in that rough water, and those fish would come up and hammer it in really, really rough water if the water is clear. And I've done the same thing like on, uh, like at, on, the, on the Great Lakes, like at Lake St. Clair, Lake Champlain, those type of places, Lake Ontario. If you have really clear water, and especially if you have smallmouth, the fish will come up and hammer a walking topwater, uh, even in the roughest conditions out there. So that's a walking topwater. Next one we'll get into is a uh, chugger. 
Now, Chugger is also a really old category top water. If you guys are familiar with the old hula popper, the hula popper's been around, man, for probably since the 1940s. And a Chugger is just what it says. This is the Mega Bass Pop Max here, more modern version. But it's basically, you just pop it through the water and it spits out water to the side and makes like a bloop, bloop, sound like that. And the main characteristics of a popper is it's the diversity of speeds that you can work it at. Now, all the top waters pretty much, you can work at a diversity of speeds. But the thing about the popper is you can actually work it, you can, you can make it go crazy through the water everywhere, or you can like bloop it and let it set and let all the ripples dissipate and even bloop it just another inch. And you can put this thing and keep it in one spot for a long time. And that's, that's one of the biggest advantages of a popper. And also that's what makes a popper really good in a wide range of water clarities. Because let's say, for example, if you're fishing water that's sort of considered dirty for a top water and dirty water for a top water for me would be something like, you know, anywhere between, I don't know, 15 to 18 inches, maybe a, a foot and a half to two foot of visibility is what I consider sort of dirty top water lures. Uh, water and a popper will catch fish in those off-colored waters because not only that you have that chugging sound but you can leave it in one spot for a long time and those fish can track it and find it better and also you can fish it in tighter spots so let's say for example you throw a popper you know up underneath a boat dock or between a boat dock and maybe you've got like a, a, a maybe a four or five foot lane that you can only work it before you come up to a cable or whatever you can keep a popper in the strike zone for a long time. And that's one of the biggest advantages of a popper is keeping it in the strike zone a long time. But you can also fish it at different speeds. You can fish it at a medium speed, or you can just make the thing go crazy and jump out of the water. I know a lot of guys in real, real clear water, and this was one of the big key players, like when they first started having the US Open at Lake Mead in that clear water, people would throw these chuggers and they just reel them where they just about came out of the water spitting water, chugging water, and uh, it was highly effective in clear water. So ch chugger is a really good bait in a diversity of different water clarities out there. Okay, the next one is a buzzer, guys. Now, we've, if you've ever watched, you know, Intuitive Angling much lately, you've seen me talk a lot about buzzers. I consider the buzzer probably the number one lure for off-colored water, topwater fishing. Um, I don't like a buzzer in clear water as far as when you're talking about the maximum water visibility for a buzz bait, for me, if I, I do not fish a buzzer if it's over four foot clarity. I, to me, the best buzz bait fishing is sort of in that foot and a half to three foot range, off colored stained water, um, because a buzz bait is a noisy bait. It's a, it's a gurgling bait, depending upon the style of the buzzer, as far as if it's a clacker or just a regular buzzer, it can create a tremendous amount of noise and it will pull fish out of that dirtier water. And also a buzz bait is a really good lure to pull fish um, away from cover, like lay down trees or docks or grass beds or something like that. Not so much for pulling a, bait, a, a fish out of deeper water, you know, like a, a walking bait in clear water will pull a fish out of 25 or 30 foot of water. Not so much with a buzz bait here. So the buzz bait, I consider it a, a more off colored water. It works in a wide range of conditions out there as far as weather conditions. It'll work in calm water, it'll work in choppy water. Um, it stood the test of time, and it really surprises me because a buzz bait telegraphs itself. I mean, the, the sound of a buzz bait is really, really you know, obvious and unique, but there's something about the, the whole presence of it that the fish have really liked it for well over 50 years now. So buzz bait would be a little bit more for the off-colored situation. Now the next one is what I consider sort of an old school topwater, and that's a chugger. Uh, it's, it's a it's a, a prop bait. There's several different types of them. You got the, the prop bait like this old wood chopper, which is a large aggressive prop bait, and then you've got the more subtle uh, prop baits like this. Uh, I think this is a uh, um, God. What is it? Crazy shad or something like that, or a devil's horse. I mean, devil's horses have been around a long time. It's the same. Devil's horse is the same, but they're longer and narrower. But anyway, both of these lure categories have props on both ends of them like this. Now, a lot of times these are associated with Florida fishing. Um, grass bed fishing, shallow grass is where the prop baits sort of came to fame. 
on the more subtle prop baits and they do work very well in in and around shallow grass specifically in you know florida waters but also guys a prop bait is a really good bait to throw in the summertime on any type of lake that you fish because the perch spawn and you can get these in different type of bluegill patterns and for those sh uh, shallow uh, perch spawning fish that are up shallow spawning all summer a uh, a, 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 a prop bait like this is a really good way to catch them. But the bigger pr prop baits like this, what, what these are, I guess you'd, some people call them a slash bait because they're a lot more aggressive and they make a lot more noise than like this little prop bait. This little prop bait, it just, it just has a little buzz sound, but this thing has got, you know, comes through the water, it's 10 times louder. Now, the times that this thing works good is pulling fish away from cover in shallow water. I don't care if it's wood or grass or whatever like this. This is one of the best lures to pull fish away from shallow cover in the hot water months. This is a summer bait. This, this bait works really, really good in the summer. And I used to fish with this old 85 year old dude back in the 1980s. He was 80 some years old back in the 1980s. And we used to float creeks all the time. And all he would throw is this wood chopper like this and he'd throw it on a spin cast reel and he'd chunk it up there underneath those overhanging trees and just chug it a couple times and caught a bunch of good fish like this. But uh, this is a sort of a forgotten bait. A lot of people don't throw the old slash baits anymore, but at times they can be really good. If you gave me one scenario to throw them, it would be like fishing it in June, July, and August around any type of shade in shallow water. This, again, the shade of the overhanging tree, the shade off of you know the you know just a steep bank that's got some shade on it throwing it around a boat dock um, again you can keep the slush bait in an area for or the slash bait in an, in an area a long time depending upon how fast you move it the way that i like to fish it is a lot, is like i'll jerk it down you know have the commotion come up let it set till the ripples completely dissipate and do it again but it's a really good way to catch some big ones on there now, next one, we'll get into a floating minnow bait. This is the old floating minnow Rapala. And guys, I have caught a freaking ton of fish on a floating Rapala using it as a topwater lure. It's one of my favorite ways to catch topwater fish. This is a very, very subtle topwater lure, and you've got to have several different set of conditions for this to work good. Number one, the fish have to be in shallow water and the water visibility needs to be sort of in that two and a half to maybe four foot range. And it really works good if you've got shallow grass. I don't care if it's water willows, gator grass, millfoil, hydrilla, whatever. Shallow grass twitching this little rapala on the surface is just deadly. And also with that, you've got to have a couple different conditions. You've got to have a slick condition. This thing works better if there's not any ripples on the water. I'm talking about if it looks like a swimming pool or a bathtub where there's no ripples, it is so subtle because you can, tw you can twitch it just the slightest little movement where it just ripples the water a little bit, it doesn't make any sound. It just basically disturbs the water. And when those fish are in really shallow water and it's still and there's no wind or anything like that and they're spooky, this is a good way to catch some really giant fish and it works about any time the water temperature is over 60 degrees. So it works from the spring, summer, fall. Again, it's sort of like that slash bait. A lot of people don't use it, but guys at times, this thing, it's one of the best ways to catch a really big bass when those fish are feeding on top water. Like I said, we'll get into a little bit more details here in a second on all these. Okay, the next one guys, is the sort of like a unique category on its own is the whopper plopper. Now the whopper plopper, I guess you could sort of equate it a little bit to the slash bay a little bit as far as the noise it makes, but a whopper plopper, plopper is in a class unique to itself. And again, we've done videos on this in the past and intuitive angling, but the whopper plopper is a really good bait to pull fish a long distance out of shallow water. It's not really a bait that you fish over deep water, like a walking bait. This is a bait that you cover shallow water and it brings in fish horizontally. So a whopper plopper is a good bait to fish in water depths of like less than, less than four or five foot. I prefer most of my whopper plopper fish come out of two to three feet of water. 
it's a good bait to throw around a variety of cover, uh, rocks, wood, lay down trees, anything like that. Anytime the fish are up and shallow and aggressive. The big key on a whopper plopper, since it is a super loud, aggressive bait, is those fish have to be in an aggressive feeding mood. And that aggressive feeding mood is usually some type of a south wind, a uh, steadier rising barometric pressure, a little bit of humidity in the air. You don't necessarily have to have clouds or any type of certain cloud conditions, but you do have to have those stable warming weather conditions. And uh, the way that you fish it is based upon the aggressiveness of the fish. You can reel it slow, medium, or fast, just like any other top water, just have to gauge the, the mood of that. But the Whopper Plopper is really unique and it excels in the fall time of the year. You can catch them at different times of the year, but the month of September, October, and November, for whatever reason, the fish really will, feel, will, will hit a Whopper Plopper good. Okay, and the next one, let's see how many we got left here. We've got two more left. The next one is a frog. Frog is a topwater lure. Again, it is a unique bait and it is designed specifically to fish around very shallow, heavier cover. Not necessarily that you have to have heavy cover, but the fish have to be in shallow water. Frog is another one of those baits that is extremely subtle based upon you how you work it. It's a quiet bait, comes through the water like a, like a walking topwater. Some of the frogs have a popping concave nose where you can chug them. But again, a frog is designed to pull non-aggressive fish or aggressive fish out of really shallow cover, or excuse me, out of really shallow water in a little bit more stained water. A frog, again, is gonna work more in that, that water uh, visibility range of like a foot and a half to three foot. And it's also good, like I said, around any type of aquatic vegetation, whether it be lily pads, matted grass, hydrilla, whatever like that, because a frog, you can throw it in that thick vegetation and you can leave it completely still in any type of an opening within that thick vegetation and you can barely move it. And that'll pull those fish out of that vegetation to bite it. And you can also fish this thing in more open conditions like skipping it underneath boat docks or skipping it underneath overhanging trees. Since it is a weedless bait, it can get into places where most other topwaters can't. And that's really one reason why the frog excels. And when you think about frogs in terms of weedlessness, don't just think about the weedlessness being around grass. That is one aspect of it. But another place that you can throw a frog is you can take it like on a flipping stick and you can pitch it like into a lay down tree or way underneath the dock, any other place that a lot of top waters would get hung up and uh, pull them out of there. And again, another good aspect about a frog is with some of these, you can fish it slow, you can fish it fast, you can fish it medium. That's what, another reason it's really effective. And the, the last one we're gonna talk about, the last category is the winged topwater. Now, a winged topwater, this is, <laughs> this is a Megabass version right here, the I-wing, Megabass I-wing. But the winged topwaters have been around a long time with like the Head and Crazy Crawler, which I used to use a lot back in the 1970s. But a winged topwater, it looks like a bird going across the water. Just, it sort of goes like that across the water. And guys, this can be really, really effective, again, in a little bit more off-colored water conditions in warm water. For me, when I think about a wing top water, I'm, I'm always thinking about throwing it around something in shallow water, like a flooded bush, or again, a dock, or a lay down, or a tree, with that water visibility, again, in that foot and a half to three foot range. But this is another category, there's two, topwaters guys that don't get much attention and one is a slash bait and the other is the wing topwater. These are super effective lures that do not get fished very much. Okay guys, so that's sort of the categories there. Um, I'm gonna take a little break here and get a drink and we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about colors a little bit and then we're gonna get into the equipment to throw it on and I'll be right back. Okay guys, we're back. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about colors because uh, like any other fishing lure out there, colors play a big role in a topwater lure based upon different factors like the sky conditions, light levels, wind, water clarity, all that type of deal. So we're gonna go over several different colors here, talk about that, when I like to use which ones under certain conditions. One thing I do wanna forget, I forgot when we were talking about lure categories, I forgot to mention the wake bait, guys. Now the wake bait, um, this is another lure category unique to its own. This is the Mega Bass Anthrax here, but a wake bait, <clears throat> excuse me, is a lure that you reel slow along the surface and it wobbles side to side like that, but it stays on the surface 
and it throws out a visible wake behind it. Now, this is a really, really successful bait to use in a, several different scenarios and conditions. Number one, you've got to have real clear water. If, if a wake bait is gonna get bit, you really need water visibility of at least four foot in clarity, in my opinion, <clears throat> simply because it's subtle and the fish has to see the weight behind it. So you have to have clear water and you have to have calm water. Because if you try to throw a wake bait and the water's choppy, it'll nosedive and you won't see the wake out there and you don't hardly catch any fish. But on those calm days where you can reel this thing real slow, just you know walk it like that, you got this nice V coming out from behind it. And that combination of calm water and clear water will bring those fish out of really deep water to hit it. A wake bait and a walking bait are the two top waters that will bring fish deeper than any other bait out there. So I <clears throat> just want to go over that. Okay, guys, let's talk about colors, some of my favorite colors here. Now, I want to start out with saying I'm going to give just an, an overview of the um, what we talk about as far as the basic color schemes in the top water. And the basic the basic color schemes in in any top water, or excuse me, in any lure period out there, is the uh, the level of translucency that a lure has, I'm trying to get one out, I got them all messed up here. The level of translucency it has, like the Zerispook that's clear here, you know, this has got some clear sides to it on it. And then you've got some lures that have flat finishes that are sort of like, well, like this baby bass here. This is a solid color, flat finish. You can't see through it. And then you've got a metallic finish out there. So that's the three basic lure categories. Now. Top waters are the same as other lures. I wanna talk about those three categories as far as conditions, and we'll get into specific colors. But you're gonna find that the translucent colors work a little bit better on bright days, sunny days, and really clear water. It's, it's more of a subtle color. So when you're really, really trying to key on those more finicky fish and those fish that are wary because of the clear water and not much wind, translucent is really good. The flat finish or the matte solid finish is better on low light conditions. Cloudy days, rainy days, you know, water visibility that's maybe a little bit on the dirty side out there. Any type of low visibility condition, flat will work better. <coughs> and metallic, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> metallic works better in brighter light levels like sunny or partly cloudy condition with wind. Now, wind is critical. Now, you can catch them on metallic in a lot of different water clarities. It works on the marginally off-colored or the clear water, but you really got to have that um, significant wind along with the brighter conditions to really, I guess it's, that's that the little bit of light, that increased light intensity allows the, the metallic to flash from a distance and it's attractive to the fish. But that's the three basic um, lure color categories there. Now, specifically, I want to talk about some colors that I like under certain situations. Um, one of my favorite colors for topwater is black, guys. Now, black is a highly, highly effective topwater color, and it gets fished by, I, I seem to, it seems like I see a lot more like highly skilled, highly advanced anglers using black topwaters versus anglers that are just getting started. Black is a really good lure color to use in a wide range of water clarities. It works in a little bit off-colored water, works in clear water. Um, but the thing about black, guys, is you've got to have two elements for black to work good. You either have to have low light conditions and clear water, or you have to have shade combined with that. So you get it, black does not hardly work on bright conditions out there, you know, with no shade. If you've got <clears throat> a sunny, partly cloudy day, throwing a top water out there, that's a tougher condition for any top water, but especially for black. So keep the black guys for those rainy, cloudy days, or if you're throwing it in shade, like underneath boat docks, underneath overhanging walkways, all that type of stuff. And another thing you'll find out about black that I found, it works good early and late in the year. It's a good bait to throw in the spring, early in the spring when the fish are just starting to hit top waters. And it's also a really good color to throw in the late fall, like <clears throat> sort of the same type of deal when the fish are, <coughs> excuse me, I think allergies, when the fish are starting to get off of top waters, black is a good color. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is that is. That's sort of one of those mysteries of fishing out there. The next one we'll talk about is any type of a bright color of a top water, like the chartreuses, bright white, any type of gaudy looking bright uh, top waters out there. 
Again, there's two situations that's gonna work, and it's sort of a paradox. Number one, it's good in off-colored water and low light conditions, obviously, because you can see it a little bit better, but also it's highly effective in very clear water for smallmouth bass. So if you're fishing a lake that's heavy on smallmouth, I don't care if the water visibility is 20 foot clarity, a bright, gaudy type of top water is gonna be really appealing to smallmouth, not so much to largemouth, but uh, it's sort of on both ends of those spectrum. Largemouth spotted bass, you need low light conditions, off colored water, smallmouth clear water works really good for the gaudy conditions. And it's also sort of the same on any lures that have any type of chartreuse on them. That, that sort of goes into that uh, play as well. Okay, the next one, guys, is a frog pattern. Now, a frog pattern, for me, pretty much, there's two different baits that I like the frog pattern on. And one is a, uh, they, they don't get used that much either. Um, frog patterns have been around for a long time, but I love it. This is my favorite color of Mega Bass Pop Max. It's the frog pattern. And then the old Zara Spook. Guys, this, look at how chewed up this thing is. I caught an eight pound, 12 ounce bass on this very Zara Spook at Lake Murray in October during the Bass Mega Bucks tournament. But a bullfrog pattern topwater walking bait is one of my favorites along with this. And again, works in a wide range of conditions. One of the things that I will tell you about frog patterns is when those fish are really shallow, that's when a frog pattern works good. Probably because frogs live in shallow water. You don't, that's why frog patterns aren't very good, <clears throat> you know, out on points and stuff like that, because you don't have many frogs out on points. You got a lot of frogs on the bank. It's a good color for that. Now the next one is a, some type of a bone topwater. <clears throat> now the bone topwater, it's a little, it's sort of similar, but it's a little bit different than the gaudy bright ones, even though it is a pretty bright topwater. A bone topwater is one of the most versatile topwater colors you're gonna find. It works in really clear water. It works in stained water. Um, it pulls a fish from a long distance away. This is the benefit to a bone topwater is it will attract a fish from forever. So a walking bait in a bone is probably one of the most best, one of the most best colors you can throw in a walking bait because if you're fishing, again, out over deeper water, over points, over standing timber, they can see this thing from a long way away, yet it's subtle enough to where they won't back off it <clears throat> like those bright chartreuse ones. So a bone is a really good uh, color in that situation. Chrome is another good topwater color, guys. Now, chrome is one of my favorite colors to throw during the heat of the summer. Now, this, I think a lot of this has to do with the fish are on shad, feeding on shad, but bone works, again, a wide range of conditions as far as water clarity conditions. It works in sun, it works in clouds, everywhere. Bone is probably the best color you're gonna throw if you have fish that are schooling on the surface. A lot of you guys that fish out on lakes that have herring lakes, like a, you know, Lake Hartwell and that type of stuff. A chrome lure is one of the top uh, colors for that, but uh, I use chrome quite a bit during the heat of the summer. And then um, finally, we'll get back more to the, uh, pull up the uh, shad patterns here, the more shaddy translucent patterns. Now there's a lot of different shad patterns out there because, but basically a shad pattern is some type of a translucent. You've got sexy shad patterns, you got Tennessee shad patterns, Ozark shad patterns, but any type of a shad pattern top water is again, it's a really versatile top water. It works in a lot of different conditions out there. Um, this is, if you could throw one color of top water and have the most consistent action on, it's gonna be a shad pattern because a shad pattern based upon the, uh, the level of translucent sleet or flat on the shad pattern, it's gonna work in you know water visibilities of anywhere from two foot on up to 10 or 20 foot of visibility. So that's sort of a, an overview of the colors, but one of the things about colors is um, I found on topwater fishing that colors are unique to local locales, local, local situations. In other words, certain lakes have certain colors that simply work better than others. Oh yeah, we did forget about the buzz bait. Buzz bait's sort of the same guys for the black, same conditions, more low light, cloudy conditions, and then your pearls and whites and shads are for the brighter conditions. But anyway, what I was saying is one of the one of the things you have to realize about topwater colors is every lake seems to have like its its pet color um, that that works really good on that. So a lot of that has to do with 
the type of bait fish you have in the lake, water conditions, the tint of the water, the water clarity. So just keep an open mind on top water. If I could, if there's one lure category out there that color is probably not as important as other lure categories, it would be top waters. And the reason that is, is because the fish are looking up at that bait and really all they see is the belly of the bait and sometimes the side of it a little bit. I think the colors on top water a lot of times are for our benefit more than the fishes. I'm not saying they're not important, but in term, but in relationship to like the color of a jerk bait or the color of a crank bait or the color of a glide bait, something like that, where those where that bait is down in the water where they can really get a good look at it, the color is simply not as important. Although it is important, it's not as important. So um, it's more about the uh, the action and the cadence that we're going to get into here a little bit. <coughs> okay show you guys a little bit what we're gonna do now is i want to show you about the equipment that i throw it on and then i want to give just like a brief demonstration of some different actions and cadences that you can put on the top water layers so really for guys for for all of my i need to close the garage door here guys there's like all types of trains and helicopters flying over right now we've got on our where we live here there's a i think there's like a medical helicopter route but they fly over quite a bit. So bear with me a second, I'm gonna close this here. <laughs> but right now my neighbors are, uh, they're doing some remodeling next door. So they got some power saws going and the trains and everything. So we get that quiet up. Okay, let's talk about the rod sit situation. Now there's, for all of the top waters I just showed you guys, there's two, setups that I use, two types of rod and reels line that I'm gonna use. The first one, guys, is for all of my baits that I actually cast out there and have to put impart action on with my wrist, like the walking baits and the chuggers and you know weight baits and that type of stuff. To some extent, I use, this is my favorite one, this is the Mega Bass uh, uh, Jerk Bait Special Rod. Um, medium action, a little bit under seven feet long, um, you, in order to do this, you've got to have a rod that is a little bit under seven foot long because if you have a rod that's over seven foot long, it sort of makes your action on your wrist a little bit more lethargic and it's harder to work the bait and it'll wear you out. So the main thing is you want to get uh, some type of a medium action rod that's got a medium tip on it. You do need some type of a, a more of a forgiving tip on it and uh, the shorter length on there will allow you to work the bait a little bit better. But any time that I'm throwing a top water that I have to put action on, it is with this rod here. Even with the frog, now I'll use a braided line on the frog, but even with the frog, I'll use that. But for my other ones, for my big baits, like the Whopper Plopper and like the, uh, you know, like the big Mega Bass Eye Wing and for a buzz bait, lures that I just, that all I'm doing is casting them out and reeling them in. Um, the, the rod I use is this Mega Bass Launcher. Now this is a seven foot, 11 inch rod. It's super long. Again, it's got a medium action on it. It's got a medium action tip. And the reason I like the long rod with that is you can cast those baits a long way and you can control them because you can, if those fish hit that lure way out at the end of the cast, the length of the rod allows you to move that fish a long way. And you, since I'm not putting any action on the rod, you know, the length of the rod is really important for that casting distance and the hook setting ability from a distance out there. But that's the, <clears throat> that's the only two rods that I use. Now the line on them, um, there's two different type of lines that I use on a top water lure. I either use monofilament line, uh, you can't use fluorocarbon on top water, it, on most of them, you can on some of them. But, well, actually, I do use four carbon on one I'm going to talk about. But topwater lures that set in the water, like, for example, you know, like a popper or something like that, any lure that will set stationary in the water for a little bit of time without you moving it, you got to use monofilament line. Because if you use four carbon, that line's going to sink and it's going to get that nose down a little bit and your bait will go underwater. All those. And then on the straight reeling line out there, when I'm just straight reeling, I do use fluorocarbon. So say for example, on my, you know, whopper ploppers like this, or the, you know, the big wing top waters or the buzz bait, I use 25 pound test Sea Garden Vizx fluorocarbon line. I don't like braided line. 
simply because I do want a little bit of stretch. And since I'm using that big rod, that seven foot 11 inch rod, I got plenty power. I'm not worried about hooking the fish and using the fluorocarbon line with those straight reel topwaters, I simply can cast it further a little bit. I don't have, uh, I, it seems like I just get better feel with it than I do with the braided line. The only time that I do use braided line is on a frog and I will use like 40 pound test cigar um, smackdown braid <clears throat> in the gray with the frog. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> and the only, time, only reason I do use a frog is because a frog requires quite a bit of power to penetrate the hook because this isn't a bait that they just grab onto and they hook themselves. You've actually got to set the hook and penetrate plastic with a larger hook in there. And therefore the braided line is, is really critical, you know, when it comes to terms on that. Okay guys, now let's talk a little bit about cadence on different type of lures out there. Now there's a couple different cadences that you want to use. Let's talk first about walking top waters. Now walking top waters, it's, it's pretty simple. A lot of times you'll just throw it out there, keep your rod tip low, and just you know reel and twitch down like that and it's all about getting the rhythm once you get that rhythm it's, it's easy you know to keep it going but a lot of times you don't just want to do it like this back and forth all the time sometimes you can give like a half a, a half snap and and let the bait set a little bit and give it another little half snap and you can get this walking bait to walk one direction so if you half snap it instead of that walking bait going like this It'll go like that and it'll set a little bit and then you snap it again and it'll go like that again. And you can actually walk it around an object like that. Charlie Campbell, one of the most famous topwater dudes out there of all time, he could take a Zara spook and actually like walk it around a log. You know, you can actually do that if you get good at it. It's just a matter of, you know, knowing the distance that you, you twitch down on with that. So that's walking topwater. That's also the same with the chugger a little bit. Chugger's the same way, you cast it out there and you're just down like that, you're just chugging it like that. Now the, the speed that you use it depends upon <clears throat> what you wanna get out of it. Most of the time you're just chugging it like that back and forth, but a lot of times I'm just twitching it down and I'll leave it, let it set a little bit, twitch a little bit more when I'm trying to pop it. That's the main way with that. Wake bait, a little bit different. Wake bait, I'm throwing it out there. I'm keeping the rod tip super high in the air. That wake bait has a tendency to go down in the water. So I keep my rod, a lot of times I'll hold my rod even up like this, 11 or 12 o'clock, and just slow reel it like that, real slow. If you reel a wake bait too fast, it'll go into the water. But by keeping your rod tip high up in the air, that keeps your line out of the water and it keeps the, keeps the bait on the surface a lot more. Um, whopper ploppers, same way, I'll cast it out there. I usually point the rod tip right at the bait and I use some type of a medium fast retrieve. Sometimes I'll just keep it like that and I'll give it a half retrieve and stop, reel it four more times, half retrieve and stop like that. Sort of give it like, um, sort of like a, a uh, little bit more erratic motion. And the same with the buzz bait guys. Buzz bait's the same way, cast it out there. And buzz bait can be like blurp, 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 blurp for colder water, or you can have a faster retrieve and business like that. But a lot of times with the buzz bait, I'm shaking the rod tip a little bit and trying to, trying to get it where it comes through the water, you know, just like this. I don't ever want it to be uniform where it goes uh, like that. You want, it, you want it to go through the water like that. The same with the whopper plopper, guys. When I'm talking about the half turn, Instead of going like this, that half turn is going to going to it's going to go and it's going to hesitate a little bit. A lot of times that's going to uh, uh, trigger the fish. Now the most difficult retrieve cadence is with the frog. Guys, frogs are pretty much pretty user unfriendly because what happens with the frog is if you don't twitch it just right. Say you're trying to get this frog to walk side to side like that. A lot of times, if you don't do it right, this frog is just gonna come straight through the water. It will, it's, not, it's not like a walking topwater. Walking topwater, you know, like the Diamante or Spook, it's, it's really easy to get it to walk. But a frog, you have to jerk it just right to get it to go back and forth, or it's, not, it's gonna go like that. It's gonna have, not gonna have very much action unless it's a chugging frog. But the frog like this, what you have to do is when you cast that frog out there, Keep your rod tip very low to the water. You've got to have that rod tip 
right at the water and make gentle twitches like that until you get the bait started. If you try to, if you try to jerk it like that, like you would a walk in top water, it's not gonna do anything. Keep that rod tip just inches from the water and gently get it where it starts walking and then you can speed, speed it up a little bit. But frog fishing is, um, for the, a lot of people that just got started on it, it can be pretty user unfriendly with that. Okay, there, and one more thing, we'll go into hooks a little bit. I will say one thing real quick about hooks, is make sure when you're using hooks, guys, that number one, you don't want any hooks that will cross each other. You wanna make sure that your hooks never are small enough where they don't cross as far as the shank of your hook. And number two, go to a little bit smaller hook because if you go to a smaller hook, it's going to increase the action of the bait. If you put too large of a hook on a topwater bait, it will deaden the action of that topwater <clears throat> and you're simply not gonna get as many bites on it. All you need to make sure is that your hooks are really sharp. I, I would rather have a little bit smaller hook and have it super sharp where they don't cross and have better action out of it than have some type of a big honking hook on there that you know kills the action and makes it more difficult to you know get the bait you know to walk right and it doesn't hook the fish any better so don't get carried away with your hook size okay guys i'm gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna get back to the final segment of our video talking about uh, seasonal patterns type of water you want to fish it in and just some advice along those lines so we'll be right back Okay guys, in the final segment of the video, which is usually always the most important, we're gonna talk about seasonal patterns with the top waters, where you wanna fish it, and um, a little bit of conditional type of stuff. And one of the things that I would highly suggest is when, when you're trying to learn about bass fishing, um, everything that we covered in the first part of the seminar is critical and it's important, but if there's anything that you really need to spend time and spend give your extra attention to it's when you talk or when you hear people talk about seasonal patterns and movements and places where you can locate the fish because it's always easier to catch fish even if you don't have the right lure in areas that have a lot of fish in it being there at the right place in the right time whether than having the best lure that's not in the best place in the right time so um, from that standpoint this is pretty critical but what i want to do is i want to go through sort of the seasons on when I like to use certain top waters and we're gonna go through spring through the fall because I'm not gonna talk about winter time. Winter's not really a time for top water. Yeah, you can catch fish in what is considered the winter down south, but for the most part, I wanna talk about sort of that March through December time frame, what I when I choose you know certain lures. First of all, let's talk about the uh, pre-spawn. Now the pre-spawn top water fishing, in my opinion, there's a range of like when that water temperature is between like 55 and 60 degrees. There's two top waters that are gonna be the best. Number one, it's gonna be your wake bait, and number two, it's gonna be a buzz bait. Now, these are by far the best two top waters. The wake bait is going to be the best or the earliest top water lure that the fish bite. There's something about a wake bait, the fish will bite it in colder water than they'll bite any other top water. So, when that water temperature first starts hitting 55 degrees and to some extent a buzz bait a little bit too, start thinking about pulling out your wake bait and your buzz bait. Now the wake bait situation, what you wanna look for when that water is between 55 to 60, go to the back of the coves and start fan casting that thing in clear water. You have gotta have water visibility of at least four feet for this to work. Go back towards the back end of those coves and start fan casting that wake bait down the middle of the cove towards the back end if the water clarity is over four feet deep. Also around boat docks in those same areas, if you got boat docks in the back of the coves, throw that wake bait next to the boat docks, <clears throat> fish it all over the back of that cove. A lot of times those, those early pre-spawn fish will move back into those areas and if you get a day where there's not much wind and that little bit warmer than normal, water's clear, a lot of times you can catch some really good fish on a wake bait in those scenarios. And there's been a lot of tournaments won on that. That's, that's sort of an off the radar deal that'll really work too. Second with that is the buzz bait. The buzz bait starts again, working them when that water temperature starts to get in the upper fifties. When that water starts hitting about 57 degrees, it's the same type of deal. Go back into the flatter areas towards the back of the coves that it warming up quicker. Now, 
for a buzz bait to work good in the pre-spawn in those conditions, you have to have the right water conditions and weather conditions. You have to have water that's a that's sort of in that two to three foot clarity. You've got to have a warm day. You've got to have one of those days that's sort of unseasonably warm, preferably partly cloudy or sunny. And you'll have a lot of times those big fish will move up real shallow to take advantage of those specific days. And you can take a half ounce black buzzer, black's the best color with black bait blades, get back in those flat areas, those flat coves and fish that buzz bait real slow in those areas is a good way to catch them. <clears throat> now, as it gets closer to the spawn and those fish actually start getting around spawning, that's when I use the minnow bait like the Rapala. You can take a the Rapala minnow or like a rogue topwater, the shallow rogue, and get back in those spawning type areas and throw that thing to the bank and just twitch it slowly down the bank. That's a really good way to catch them when those fish are, you know, sort of in that spawning mode. When the fish get done spawning and they're starting to move out to their post-spawn areas, this is usually in the month of May for a lot of parts of the country. <clears throat> this is the time of year. <coughs> excuse me, guy. <coughs> excuse me about these dang congestion from these allergies, the drippage. But anyway, when, it's, when you start to get into the post-spawn, this opens up a wide range of topwater fishing to be good. Now, probably one of my favorite ways to catch them during the post-spawn is on a walking topwater because one of the first places that fish move is they'll go out to the, like the, the points, the main lake or secondary points back in the creeks. Say, for example, they've been spawning in the back of the cove. <clears throat> they'll go to the closest point out there and sort of recuperate a little bit from spawning. That's a really good way to catch them on a walking topwater. Again, if the water's cleaner out there. Another good way to catch them that time of year on a topwater is on a popper. <clears throat> popper is an excellent lure to fish, sort of for those late spawners. When you have some fish up there that are done spawning, a lot of times those fish will hang out around those areas. They're, <clears throat> they're gonna be up there garden fry, sort of just hanging close to that particular area. And you can take the little popper and the little chugger and catch them like that. And also, in the post spawn early like that, a real small buzz bait works good. Like a little uh, eighth ounce or quarter ounce buzzer, it's like completely different. In the pre spawn, that big buzz bait works really good. But in the post spawn, <clears throat> they don't want that big buzz bait, they want that little bitty one. So try fishing again, the same type of spawning areas <clears throat> with that little quarter ounce buzz bait or the eighth ounce buzz bait in that, in that time frame there. So this works really good until the fish starting to start to get into the summer pattern. Now, once they start getting in the summer pattern, specifically like June, that's when I really like to go to the prop baits, like the little bluegill pattern prop baits. And I get back in those areas, the same areas where the fish were spawning, the bass were spawning, the perch will start moving into those same areas, the bluegill and the black perch and the pumpkin seeds they'll start moving into those same spawning areas. A lot of times those bass will live with them all summer in those areas. And you can take those little prop baits or the walking baits sometimes. The prop baits work better if it's a little bit off colored water. The walking baits work better <clears throat> in the clear water situation. But take the walking baits and the prop baits, <clears throat> get back there and start fishing those same type of spawning areas, trying to target those bass that are feeding on those spawning bluegills. Also, Summertime is a real good time to take advantage of early morning topwater fishing. And for early morning topwater fishing, you have a real small window, usually like the first hour after daylight. And it's a good, another good time to catch them on a buzz bait or some type of a chugger up shallow in those type of areas too. Now, this holds pretty much true till you start getting into September. And once you start getting into September, you have a big personality shift in the fish. And the bigger fish will start moving shallower in bigger numbers, and they start getting more aggressive on the top water. Normally, like I said, this starts and usually in some, usually it's like mid to late September, more like, more like late September for the most part. And this is the time of year I like to fish the big aggressive top water. So this is the time of year I'm fishing like the whopper ploppers, the big buzz baits, you know, maybe some of those big slash baits, something like that, and just covering water with it. And the places that they can be in, it could be anywhere. It could be on points, it could be down the side of coves, it could be in the back of coves. It's all about putting those big aggressive topwaters on and just covering water with it. And this is going to last probably um, from
from September into early November, something like that, until that water temperature starts to get down right around 60, 62 degrees. The big slash, the big top waters are gonna work good. And there, then after that, there's a final transition that takes hold. And once that water temperature starts getting down around 60 degrees, when it starts falling back to 55 or 60s, this is the time of year when you need to put everything away except a shad pattern buzz bait. A shad pattern buzz bait is an excellent lure in November and December, as long as that water temperature is above mid fifties or something like that. <clears throat> There's still gonna be a fairly large number of quality bass in real, real shallow water. And a lot of times the buzz bait is the best bait to catch them on, specifically if you get some of those nasty days. If, if you guys are fishing out there, say it's uh, <clears throat> mid to late November, and the water temperatures are say 57, 58 degrees, and you get a real bad cold front coming in where the, maybe it starts spitting snow or something like that. Say the water is still, you know, in the fifties, but the air temperature is in the thirties. This is the time of year they'll hammer a buzz bait. If you get it, if you ever get a situation in November, November and December when the water is over 55 degrees and you see it spitting snow or snowing, pull out a buzzer. That's all you're going to need. It's a really good way to catch them there. So anyway, guys, that's just a sort of an overview with it. Um, keep an open mind with it. What I gave you today is sort of a foundational approach, but ultimately, like anything in fishing, you just have to experiment because fish do what they want to, and they don't read some. They don't watch seminars or read books. They're they're unique to themselves. They're individuals, and um, just experiment, man. Try if one top water didn't work, try a different one. Try a different color. Try a different retrieve on it. Mix it up a little bit. And eventually you'll, you'll run into them. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll talk later.